welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing Grayson's eight month update. So before I get started on his eight month update, which I am shocked I am actually doing right now, like it is insane to me that he's already eight months old and in just four months he will be one. I just wanted to say that I have loved doing these updates and I may have mentioned this in the last update, but I love these updates because not only can they be a reference for you guys, if you guys are kind of going through those same stages or experiences with your babies, but also I have them to look back on. It's kind of like a little virtual baby book. So I love doing these updates because it's fun for me to kind of go through the past month and it's fun to look back on when Grayson gets older. So that's why I really love doing these updates. And so far I have been able to keep up on them. So we have months one through eight of his updates and I can actually go ahead and create a playlist for you guys. So if you're curious and wanna see any of the other updates, those will be available in a playlist for you. Today is his eight month update and I just, I can't believe it. So I'm going to get started with his stats. So Grayson weighs about 22 pounds. This little chunky monkey has gained so much weight since he was first born. Originally, he was underweight. I've talked about that previously on my channel. He actually struggled with weight gain for a long time. And once we were finally able to get him gaining weight, we found a good stride and he found an appetite and the bottle issues were straightened out and everything seemed to align way better. So he has gained so much weight in the time that we have been giving him more formula, giving him different bottle nipples, and now starting him on solids. So this little boy used to not like food. He did not like food, and I will talk more about that in a minute, but obviously now he's in the 75th percentile for his weight and his age, and that's crazy because he used to be literally below the curve, like zero less than zero like he was so far down on the curve for weight and height and now he's actually in the 75th percentile kevin and i are both shocked we can't believe he's growing so much he is wearing size nine month and 12 month clothing so he could wear six month but honestly that's like pushing it and it's really snug on him so we really don't do a lot of six month clothes anymore and i do need to go through and put that away because he has outgrown it and he is in nine month and 12 month. Yes, he does fit in 12 month clothing. One year clothing, basically. So like I said, he's our little chunky monkey and he is wearing size three diapers. And we just use the Pampers baby dry diapers. Moving on to eating. This used to be something that I struggled talking about because Grayson was not the best eater at first. Actually, from the time he was a newborn, breastfeeding, struggled with breastfeeding, struggled with so many different bottle nipples until we found the right fit. He even then didn't have the biggest appetite and he still would fight his bottles and it was just a mess. When we started oatmeal, if you saw that vlog of his very first solid, you saw he was not a fan of the oatmeal. <laughs> well, when we gave him avocado for the first time, his very first real solid, not a fan. In fact, he probably cried for two weeks before he started to warm up to the food on his tray. And there was a time where he literally didn't even know it was there. He looked past it, no interest in eating whatsoever. At that time, it was a really big struggle for me. And I felt like I was doing the wrong thing by trying baby led weaning with him and not just going the pureed route. And honestly, like I did second guess everything and I wanted to just throw in the towel and go straight to purees because it would just be so much easier for me to feed him than try to stress about him getting enough food, feeding himself. I'm glad I didn't throw in the towel because now he is a completely different baby when it comes to eating. This is a kid who literally didn't want to look at food and now he like cleans his little easy peasy plate and 
I don't know who this baby is, honestly. Kevin and I both are shocked because we, his favorite meal is breakfast, by the way, but he really does do so well with it. And most of the time it's him eating, I will say I do some of the spoon feeding when it comes to like applesauce or his Greek yogurt just simply for the fact that there are times where he'll pick up his spoon and he feeds himself and he'll get in a good groove and then he'll throw it <laughs> or he'll drop it on the ground for our dog. So with those kind of things I do sometimes take over for him. It's not fully baby led weaning and I'm aware of that but I just wanted to put that little disclaimer in there. So yes, there are times where I do assist him with eating because I do want him to get all of the nutrients on his plate. And so we do that, but he otherwise does really well with picking up his own food. He's learning that pincher grasp when it comes to picking up puffs and he honestly eats so many different foods. So just to name a few, he will eat like fried eggs, avocado, blueberries, banana. He loves bell pepper. I think it just said avocado, um, Greek yogurt, applesauce, black beans. He really does do really well. And shredded chicken. He does really well with shredded chicken. And when I say shredded chicken, I just mean like you can buy the pack of like pre-cooked shredded chicken from Target or Walmart or wherever you shop. And I get that chicken and I shred it up even smaller because I just, I don't want him to choke. But He's been doing really well with that. He also eats green beans, carrots, sweet potato. The thing that he doesn't like is carrots. Carrots are something that he's very slowly getting used to, but at first he hated them. And they're still the vegetable that he kind of like is very indifferent about. We're working on carrots though, because they are good for you. So we are working on it. The last time I gave it to him a couple days ago, he actually was eating the carrots um, more willingly so that was promising, but let me know in the comments below if you guys have experience with this. What way do you prepare your baby's carrots for baby lead weaning? Because I did roasted and I did steamed. And I feel like roasted sometimes, they're not soft enough for him. Maybe I'm not roasting them long enough. But then I feel like with steamed, he just doesn't like the steamed carrots. So maybe I didn't steam them right, I don't know. But let me know in the comments below what you do if you are doing baby lead weaning and you have a different way of preparing carrots that works for you. He also loves his baby cereal. So that's his oatmeal and we do that at night. We do do his oatmeal at night before bed because it's like really good for him to go to bed with a full stomach and he sleeps a lot better that way versus when we didn't do the oatmeal, you know, he just wouldn't sleep as soundly but he loves the oatmeal and we actually make it pretty thick. We don't make it drippy anymore because he is eating solids and he's eating so much more. We do like to make it thicker for him. And it's funny because Kevin actually has his oatmeal thick whenever he makes himself oatmeal. So Grayson kind of likes that too. So he's taken after his dad in that aspect, but we do his oatmeal at night and he loves his oatmeal too. And there have been times where I'll do it in the morning and I'll put banana in it. I'll do Greek yogurt for breakfast sometimes. So I'll do a little bowl of Greek yogurt with torn up blueberries. It's important that you tear up the blueberries or grapes or whatever you're putting in there because those are very big choking hazards for babies. So torn up blueberries and then I cut banana slices into a fourths. So they're like four, one fourth banana slices um, and blueberries in his Greek yogurt and he loves it. He is drinking about 25 to 28 ounces of formula a day now because he is getting a lot more food during the day. He is drinking less formula at a time. And the way I noticed it was time to start cutting back on formula or the amount he drinks at a time is because every single time I would give him a bottle, there would be about an ounce left in it. So that told me that he's not drinking seven full ounces of formula at a time anymore, which why would he when he's getting that much more food during the day? So then I cut back to six ounces at a time. Six ounces turned into five ounces, except for when I wake him up in the morning, I do six ounces since he slept through the night and he is hungry, but I have been doing five ounces throughout the day just because he was leaving an ounce in the bottle after giving him six ounces. So he's cut back to five ounces and that seems to be working really well for him. But I do want to say you don't want to cut your baby's formula down unless you know that they're actually eating the food that's in front of them. So if they are just playing with it, you know, have no interest in it, it's definitely 
very important that you still give them that breast milk or that formula that they're needing and don't cut back on that quite yet because they do need that those nutrients. So that is something I want to caution you on. You'll know when your baby is ready to transition to less formula at a time because it, they will start to leave like the same amount in the bottle after each feeding and that can tell you like okay there there's an ounce less you know that they need now and you know you can just keep going off their cues to know when it's time to decrease how much formula or breast milk they're drinking at a time and of course if you're breastfeeding you can kind of build off those cues as well like if you notice maybe they're eating less amounts of time then you can see, okay, like they're getting more food, so they're going to be drinking less breast milk or breastfeeding a little bit less. Grayson loves drinking water out of his tiny cup. The only thing I will say about the tiny cup is sometimes he gets a little bit too much at a time and it chokes him and it makes me feel so bad when that happens. But you just have to be very careful and give them very small amounts at a time at first until they start to get used to drinking out of it. But he does really well with the tiny cup. And that's from Easy Peasy. So moving on to sleeping. Sleep. Something that parents hope to get a lot of when their babies are older. And something that we actually have gotten more of since moving Grayson to his own room. He does sleep through the night and he sleeps in his own room, in his crib. He's been doing that since the about six months old, probably a little bit after that. It was closer to seven months that we transitioned him. It was more us that wasn't ready and not him. He was definitely ready. He also sleeps in his room for nap time, which is what he's doing right now. And that's why I'm able to film this right now. And you may notice that I used to do his updates in his room. And that's because that's when he was sleeping in our room for nap time in his bassinet. But now I am in here in our room because he's in his room and I cannot film a video while he's sleeping in his crib. He usually naps for an hour and a half to two hours at a time. We try really hard not to let him go over two hours because that won't mess with the rest of his day. But sometimes we do let him go a little bit over. He goes to bed at night at 7.15 and we usually start his bedtime routine at 5.15. So that's when we'll start his oatmeal. And then from there, you know, I'll give him a bath and clean his dog band and let him play afterwards. And then we'll do bedtime routine, bottle, bed. He does sleep in his dog band and he is not bothered by it at all. I think that might change as it starts to get hotter. Today where we live, it is literally going to be 109 degrees. And I hope that this isn't interfering with anything, but the AC is on behind me because if the AC were not on, I would be dying <laughs> because it is way too hot. So we are also upstairs. I know I've mentioned that and that makes it feel even hotter. Because it's hot, I'm wondering if Grayson's gonna start to feel uncomfortable because that band does add that extra heat. But so far he's been handling it so well and he's been sleeping so well in it. We do have him sleeping in a very lightweight sleep sack. He's in a diaper. There's no onesie or anything underneath the sleep sack because we want him to be as cool as possible. We have his AC on low and his fan on at all times when he's napping because we do not want him to get too hot in there. So now something that you guys are all probably interested in is dock band updates. So Grayson did get his dock band a couple weeks ago. Actually, this coming Monday will be two weeks since he got his band and he will be having his first adjustment appointment where they shave the band down on the inside in the foam where it needs to be shaved down and make sure that it's working for him. But he's been doing really well with his dock band. Honestly, we thought that it might agitate him. We thought that he might be fussier having to wear it. And he's been so happy, so lovable, just still the best little boy. So I cannot believe that even going through that adjustment and, you know, transitioning into wearing this band 23 hours a day, by the way, he is still just the happiest little boy. We do take it off for one hour a day. That is because that is what we were instructed to do by Cranial Technologies. And that one hour is when we bathe him and wash the band. So I'm pretty anal when it comes to making sure the band is on for the exact amount of time it needs to be. And so as soon as I take that band off, I actually set a timer on my watch for an hour. And during that hour, that's when I give him a bath because let me tell you, that band gets so sweaty and his little head, even if he hasn't been outside, 
his little head is going to sweat. And at first, because his body was having to adjust to the band being on and that new, you know, that warmer body temperature, literally he would just have beads of sweat dripping down his head. And at first I kind of thought they were like tears. And then I noticed they were coming from the side of his head and it made me feel so bad. So you really can't get away with not bathing them every single night when they have the band, just because, especially it's the summertime, so it's really hot, just because they're so hot and their head will smell very stale. I thought the other night that I could get away with just like wiping his head down with a wet rag and, and you know, of course, cleaning his band. No, <laughs> I thought he'll lay on my shoulder, he'll lay on my chest and we can cuddle while his band is off because it's a little bit harder to cuddle your baby when they have the band on. He smelled his little head and it was bad. So I was like, okay, it's time for a bath. We are going to have to do a bath every night. <laughs> but during that hour, that's when we clean the band and that's with the 70% isopropyl alcohol, which is so important because you do not want any bacteria or germs or anything to build up in there. You wanna make sure that band is cleaned every single day or night. So that way it's not going to uh, you know, affect your baby's head or lead to infections or anything. We have been very pleased with the whole process so far. And I think it's gonna be really exciting once we're done with this treatment to see just how much it's transformed the shape of his head. Right now we do think that his treatment will be around two to four months, but that's literally just an estimation because it all depends on the baby and how they're handling treatment. So I guess maybe at this first fitting or this first adjustment appointment, they might tell us, you know, estimations of how much longer he'll be in the band, but honestly that might even be too early to make a guess or to try to figure out just because he is still so early in the treatment process. And last but not least, I am going to be doing his milestone updates. I don't have too many milestone updates because this band has kind of set things back as far as like crawling, and walking goes just because he's having to adjust to that for a little bit at first he didn't want to do tummy time the band was bothering him when he was doing tummy time so we were working through that he is getting stronger every day and i did notice that kevin and i were sitting on our bed with him the other day and he was sitting next to me grayson was and kevin at his computer and grayson pulled up and tried to get over to Kevin's computer. And that was the first time I've ever seen him really try to like stand up or like get up on his own. And it was because he really wanted the computer. <laughs> but that to me was a really good sign that he is going to be trying to get more mobile soon. He's able to scoot laying on his back and he is able to kind of scooch around on his belly. He doesn't have that full crawling motion yet, but he does pull his knees in and kind of like inchworm. He hasn't, you know, mastered crawling yet. So we are working on that. He can fully sit up on his own and he does a really good job sitting unsupported. I sit nearby him because his torticollis makes him a little bit wobbly. So I just want to make sure he doesn't fall over or anything, but he is able to sit up on his own and he's doing really well with that core strength and being able to support himself. He is babbling like crazy and it's so cute because sometimes it sounds like he says hi or yeah and I know that's just the sound he's making and he's not actually saying those words. Of course, part of me wants to think he is, but he's not said his first word yet and we're really trying to get him to say mama or dada. So we will see what he says first. I honestly would be okay with either. I think it would be very sweet if he said dada first, but I think I would also be honored if he said mama first. <laughs> He is a total mama's boy. So if he says mama, that'll melt my heart, but also I love the relationship that he and Kevin have. So I think it would be very special for both he and Kevin if he said dada first. And the last thing I have is that Grayson is such an animal lover. He loves dogs. He will just sit by our dog Stella and just pet her and he laughs every time she walks by. He'll be in his jumper and he's just bouncing and looking around and then Stella literally just walks by him. Sometimes she doesn't even look at him. She just walks by and he starts cracking up and Kevin and I always like to joke that like she makes him the happiest of all of us in the house. Like Stella's the one that just makes his face light up. 
and he's just full of so much joy but he really is so good with animals and he just loves to sit there and stare at them pet them and he just thinks they're the best so that makes me really happy to know that he's good to animals and he loves animals even this young and that is all i have for grayson's eight month update i just can't believe he's eight months old already i just love him so much i'm just so grateful for him kevin and i both just like pinch ourselves every day because we don't know how we got so lucky to have such an amazing little baby. And every night, whenever I put him to bed, I always tell him the same thing. Every single night, I say, mommy and daddy love you so much. You are the most important thing in the world to us. And I hope you always know that. And that just is something that I started from the time he was a newborn, when he was sleeping in our room in his bassinet and have continued since because that is something that I really do want him to remember and always know that, you know, Kevin and I love him so much and we will always love him. And I really do hope that he knows that and feels that forever. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching Grayson's eight month update. And if you did enjoy watching, I would really appreciate if you left a like and a comment down below. And to see more videos like this one related to motherhood, be sure to subscribe. Even if the sky is falling down.